My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And we went to this uh, 10-story tall death trap of a hotel in Ankara. Hi, welcome to Comedy Parenting Radio. It's the show that presses all the buttons on the elevator when we notice that you're going to the top floor. I'm taking the stairs. We want to welcome all of our listeners from iTunes, iHeart, YouTube, Stitcher, and Overcast, as well as all you other listeners out there. Today, we're going to be talking about hotels and motels. What's the difference? One has an H and the other has an M. Mm, Good point. We'll be right back. You know, if your household is anything at all like the Begley Place, you need to buy clothes, especially pants, for your kid once every week. Why don't you shop where I do, once upon a child, next to Walmart in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Comedy Panting Radio. Okay, it's Comedy Parenting Radio. We're talking about hotels and motels, and the Begley clan has had our share of weirdness in the, uh, well, places that you rent. And uh, what's the funniest thing has ever happened to you or to somebody you know of in a hotel or motel? Courtney. There was one time we were staying at this hotel in Denver, and Mom had been stressing to me a lot about how you have to look through that little peephole to see who it is when you knock. And so uh, she came back, and she was going to knock on my door. She thought it was it was the door to my room. And instead, I guess she got some other lady's room. And so I hear this hysterical laughing, which is definitely mom's. And I come out, and there's mom talking to this lady. And she's like, I got the wrong door. You know, just moving the Begley clan into a hotel is quite the production, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Very much so. No. It's like we're moving in. Actually, moving out is a lot harder than moving in. Why is that? Because uh, you have to pack up everything. When you get there, you just grab your bags and run in the door. But there are so many bags normally. So that's not as hard as having to pack everything back up and take it back out. Well, first off, moving in, you're trying to get, well, at the, t- at the time, it was like up to nine people in one room, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. So we would distract the person at the desk uh, by saying, look, a dead bird in the sky. And then they would look up and then we'd go sailing by. Or else uh, maybe we could attack the room from a different direction, right? Let everyone in through the window. Uh, That may have actually happened uh, on the ground floor once or twice. Or come in the back door or everybody come in a different door. Or we all come in separately and just walk different places and then i'll meet up and pass each other like you don't know each other yeah (laughs) and then meet up at the room and have the door blocked open i I think people would probably would have accused us of having a party every time (laughs) you guys got a hotel room and you're having a big party up there huh no no we're just spending the night here part of the problem of trying to get everybody in is we quite often went with the cart right Mm -hmm. yeah and it's normally late at night too. Dun, 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 dun. I think that I think they completely missed that joke. We did. The Cartwrights, Bonanza. Oh, really? So we would try to get everybody in with that cart. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't have nice luggage, did we? Like big square suitcases that all stack neatly. No, we had like duffel had, bags yeah, and trash duffel bags. bags. You haven't lived till you tried to get, you know, seven kids into a room with uh, sleeping bags all in black trash bags yeah. on the cart. You just have this wall of people walking around the cart holding things. And then Christina would always walk far behind us and be like, I don't know this family. Yep. Okay, Comedy Parenting Radio. We're talking about hotels and motels. One has an H or the other one has an M. We'll be right back.
Are you a failure as a parent or grandparent? Do your little ones cry for no apparent reason? Do you have lots of money? If you answered yes to these or any other invasive questions, we have good news for you. Tree Sock Press was named after a cat. A very cute cat. Tree Sock Press printed a book. That book is available in nearly indestructible hardback form and is printed with non-toxic ink so your little dinosaur can virtually eat the book. If this all seems too good to be true, you can go buy a cheap Disney book that's printed in China. Books printed in China aren't as good for teething toddlers as ones printed in Wisconsin. What's the name of our book? Dad the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come. This book is funnier than a root canal on a sinking ship. I didn't know ships had teeth. Order your copies of Dad the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come from Amazon today. Or tomorrow if you're on the International Dateline. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. Okay, it's Comedy Parenting Radio, hotels and motels. And has anybody ever heard of or done anything inside of a hotel or motel that's hmm, probably unapproved? I have. What's that, Elijah? Well, me and my youngest brother, whose name is changed to protect the innocent, named uh, Ronald. Why we like going and getting the cart is because you put one person on the cart and then push them as fast as you can back to the hotel room. Is that why it seems like you're only gone for just like a minute or two? Yeah, probably. Wow. You try to stop before you... Uh, go flying past the ho- hotel door. <laughs> you know, I've always gotten really good cart service whenever I've gone to a hotel or motel. This didn't happen to me, but I worked with a guy at the Aspen Skiing Company who used to race stock cars. Yeah. Yeah, with his uh, relatives. And he said one time they got a hotel and they blew an engine on a race and they had a race the next day. They rebuilt the engine of the stock car in the hotel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He said there was grease and oil everywhere. I'm sure the cleaning ladies loved him. One time I was going to the hotel pool and I forgot my key card. So I just went around through the maintenance entrance. (laughs) So you were walking through the maintenance place in your swimsuit? Yeah. You should have grabbed a mop or something while you were in there. The only thing I did that was probably unapproved of was drop a towel on the floor before I was done using it. <laughs> what a Boy, ghastly deed. You know how to live dangerously. <laughs> Got a rebel over here, folks. Have you ever drank out of one of those glasses that they have without unwrapping it? Oh. No. That's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Always unwrap the uh, cup before you drink out of it. What's the worst hotel you've ever been to in your life? Uh, the hotel where we had to stay in a smoking room. Oh, the one in Tuba City, Arizona? Mm-hmm. Yep. Boy, we spent a week in Tuba City, Arizona one night. And Arizona. got colds for it. Are there only two hotels in the town? Yeah. And we got that second one. The cheaper one, which was still $130. Yeah. Yeah, for a one-room smoking, smoking room. room. It was the last room they had for the whole hotel. Yeah. And, of course, it would be one of the four, maybe four? There yeah. were four smoking rooms. Smoking rooms. That we saw in the entire hotel? I have a theory about that. What? I think all the people in town who smoke come into that room and smoke during the day. (laughs) It sure felt like it. Oh, my word. And then leave. And even with the window wide open, it wasn't good enough, was it? There was obscenely large amounts of smoke smell in there. Yeah, so we did not sleep very well, did we? We didn't breathe at all. I had a sore throat in the morning. Yeah, I held my breath all night. You know what was another difficult one? What? What? When I was in Turkey with uh, the French guy named Gilles, mm-hmm. yeah. and he said to the taxi driver, take us to a cheap hotel. And we went to this 10-story uh, tall death trap of a hotel in Ankara, <laughs> and there were cockroaches on the floor. The doorknob came off in my hand. It was like a, <laughs> it was, well, not, it was a community bathroom. It's like you would Ooh. go in there by yourself, but then shut the door, and the doorknob came off in my hand. And I said to Jill, 
don't touch anything in this hotel. Don't touch the floor. Don't touch the bed. So we took our sleeping bags out and each laid them on the bed. And we were up on the 10th floor and I thought, we're going to die in a fire tonight. And uh, I looked out the window. It was 10 stories down. And we had climbing ropes with us because we were on an expedition. And I said, hmm, 10 stories at 12 feet per story, 120 feet, 150 foot rope. We could get out of here alive if we had to. <laughs> <laughs> we could rappel down. But it was cheap or was it cheap? $10. It's pretty cheap. But we had to carry our climbing expedition equipment up 10 stories to the top. That must have been fun. It it took more than a minute or two. Really, though, that's not stuff you want to have to have to think about when you're in a hotel. What's that? Whether or not you could survive by rappelling out a window in case of a fire. Well, if you're ever with me in a 10-story death trap hotel, we've got the climbing rope, we're good to go. First thing I did was look for uh, rappelling anchors. Like, I could put the uh, rope around this entire bed. <laughs> <laughs> and even if the bed slid to the window, it's not coming through the window. Walk out the, door. Just turn around now. the whole wall would have to come out, and I hopefully you guys aren't that exactly. heavy. Exactly. Hotels and motels. We'll be right back. You're listening to Comedy Parenting. Stop imitating Fezzik, and I mean it. Does anybody want to do that? Ranger Station. Hi, um, I want to report a bear sighting. Location? My front door. It was Smokey Bear. My husband was burning leaves in the yard. He just came inside for a second. Never leave a fire unattended. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. Smokey said that, too. We go way back. I knew him when he was just a cub. How cute. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Don't let the fire rush to your head. I do remember one activity that was unapproved one time. What's what was that? that? Well, uh, when I was a bachelor, my roommate Jim, and uh, this is the same Jim as in Jim Beats the Rangers episode. Uh, Jim and I were in Aspen, and we had frisbees. And Back in the day, there was no real such thing as Frisbee golf set up in the Aspen area, so we made up our own. What did it entail? Well, we took turns going around downtown Aspen in the parks and all, and one person would say, okay, the next hole would be, you know, you have to land a Frisbee on the slide in the park, okay? So you throw it to the park. Next Frisbee has to go through the water in the water fountain, so you would, you know, throw Frisbees until you got to the fountain. Well, Jim said... The next Frisbee has to land right in front of the fireplace in the Hotel Jerome. (laughs) Were you successful? Well, yeah, eventually. So we're throwing Frisbees kind of gently down the streets of Aspen and on the sidewalks and trying not to get in trouble, you know, kind of keep it (laughs) low-key. Then we got to Main Street in Aspen, and that's like, okay, when the light turns green, the Frisbee goes to the other side of the street. So there's the green light, and there goes the Frisbees go flying across the crosswalk. We went running. We grabbed them, picked them up, threw them again, got them to the sidewalk, threw them again, got them to the sidewalk. And when you get to the front door of the Hotel Jerome, there's usually a guy who opens the door for you. (laughs) He wasn't there. Uh Uh-oh. I don't know if he was on a break or... You know, went to lunch or whatever. And so it's like, okay, Jim, I'll open the door for you. And you throw it into the lobby. And then you throw it again up toward the <laughs> fireplace and then grab it. And you go running out the door. But then you're going to hold the door for me and I'm going to do the same thing. So I held the door and this Frisbee went sailing into the Hotel Jerome, lands on the floor. Jim runs in, grabs it, throws it again, gets it in front of the uh, fireplace, grabs this Frisbee and goes running out the door. And they're going, hey, hey, you, hey. And then all of a sudden, here comes another Frisbee in the door, and it was me. And I grabbed, like, thank you, bye. So uh, not always approved activities in the hotel. They're, those are the funnest sometimes. They really can be. All right, you've been listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. We're talking about hotels and motels. I want to thank you guys for coming up here today. Yeah, you're welcome. Welcome. Sure thing. You're welcome. And uh, by the way, when you guys go, uh, make sure that your key card fits your door and not the neighbor's door. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Mine says 521. Is that correct? Uh, No. Wait, here. 
let me see yours. Hang on. Nope. That's not it.